So here we are at a customer's house and um, we've got one of the storage heaters. Um, the customer phoned me up last week and, and said that their storage heater wasn't working. Not that it particularly needs to be working in the weather we've got at the moment, but they, it, it wasn't working last winter and, and they want it um, to, be, to be looked at. At the moment, at this stage, um, I've got no idea really what's wrong with it. Um, so I thought we'd sort of shoot a video to sort of maybe um, ha have a look and see what the, um, what the problem could be. So this particular storage heater that we're looking at this morning is a Dimplex storage heater. Um, again, it should have four elements inside it. Each element, I believe, is about 800 watts each. So it's about a 3.2 kilowatt system, which requires, which will draw about 13, 13 14 amps. Um, and so I thought we'd have a look at, at taking it apart. Normally there's two screws. There's one screw under here and one screw under here. They're quite awkward screws. They never, they're often put in too tight and they're really awkward to get, to, um, to get out. But on this one, the screws aren't in. So if we just pull it apart, you'll notice that it actually just comes off. So the front cover has come off just like that. As you can see, it's quite dusty in there and you can't see that there's a bit of dust at the top with various things. There's an old milk bottle top in there, quite a bit of dust, so that'll have to be cleaned out. So what I'm interested in looking at initially, before we actually go through any, um, any fault finding or anything, is to have a look at these two dials here. We've got the dial on the right and we have the dial on the left. Customers constantly complaining about storage heaters being too expensive to run or not getting hot enough and more often than not in nine times out of ten cases that I go to it's because this dial here is fully open okay so they've opened it up fully which means that as you can see when you turn this this dial fully clockwise it opens up this little flap here so this is the output dial it really wants to be left closed. This dial here is the input which controls the, which is the thermostat shall we say, and that controls the um, how, how long the elements are on and off for. And so usually, again, they don't really want to be on more than about halfway. So as you turn it, you can see the dials are open and closing, which brings the biometallic strip into contact, which will allow electricity to um, flow to the to the elements. But let's just concentrate on this dial here. So as you can see, when it's fully clock, when it's turned fully anti-clockwise, this flap here is closed. As I open it, as I turn it clockwise, it lifts this flap here. And what that basically does is it allows heat that is being stored inside. It's allowing the heat to escape. And so it's actually really a boost button. And so let's say, for example, in the evening, you're feeling the, the, the heat in the room, you want a little bit more heat. If you just open this and turn it clockwise, heat can then escape from in here out into the room, which will give you more, which will give you a boost of electricity, um, sorry, a boost of heat. But what you must remember to do before you go to bed that night, or you know when the room is hot enough you must remember to turn this dial fully anti-clockwise. So we've got this front cover here as well and we're going to ex we're going to take this off to expose um, the the insides. So all we have to do is just undo these four so know, these eight screws.
Okay, we've took the screws out, which holds this metal galvanised sheet on the front. As this lifts away, there is a, a lining on the inside, like an insulation lining. So you, you need to make sure that doesn't all stick. That comes off quite nicely. And so the bricks just simply come out. They are heavy and you've got to be careful that they don't all fall out. So the original problem that the customer had was that the storage heater just wasn't getting very hot. So what I've got now, I've got the four elements exposed and I'm actually going to turn, turn the um, storage heater on and I'll physically, physically be able to see whether or not the, um, the, the, the elements get warm or not and if voltages get into each element so I can, I can do those tests now. So we'll turn the storage heater on, oh, there's voltage coming in. There's 226 volts there. Turn the element, turn that up. And already I can feel that the elements are getting very warm. If I touch them now I'll burn my hand. So I know that all four elements are working correctly. Yep, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with those elements at the moment. So I'll just turn it down and turn it off. This is an element that I replaced several weeks ago. This is what I thought might have been the problem actually here. So I've brought some spare elements with me, but I've actually got this element left in the van. This is one that had um, that wasn't working. Um, several weeks ago that I've replaced for, um, for from a storage heater so you can see usually it's quite it's quite um, obvious to see if an element is broken or not or if it's, if it's not working um, just by visually looking at it initially you can see in these ones that they're all in pretty good condition okay so the electrics are all turned off again and so now I'm going to put the bricks back in place you can see on the bricks that they are shaped. So this is the bottom bit at the bottom part of the element and then it goes on the top for the top part. So I'll just put the bricks back in and already just with having them elements on for that few seconds already there's a lot of heat created in there. What you do have to be careful with when you're putting the, the elements back in, uh, putting the bricks back in, is that you're not trapping the elements at all, so they are still free to move, which they are. So, when you, so again, just explain how the storage heater works again. The bricks are in front and behind, or behind and in front of the element. So, you've got all this space here that when the elements are on, um, they get terrifically hot and it heats up these bricks and that's why it's called a storage heater because the heat is stored inside um, it's obviously in, in the element in this space and within the bricks if storage heaters if I ever had to replace a storage heater and, and it's been working and then suddenly it's not working you have to leave the, the storage heater turned off for you know two or three days because these bricks can't retain their heat terrifically and so you just have to be, um, you know, you just might have to be, always be, be very careful. When you put these bricks on the top, they go in this way. So this this front, this this bit here is shaped again. Needs to be going towards the top. Happy that that's all all okay. We can now put the front cover back on. It's got these the, this little lip here slots into the slot at the bottom. I 
and then the, four, the eight holes should all line up. Okay, so now we've put the storage heater, the front panel back together, all the bricks are in, the elements are checked. You can see that I've just had a, a sweep up at the top of the, the heater. All I need to do now is put the front cover back on. Again, I'll go and get a couple of screws and just put the screws in the bottom just to keep it retained in so it don't, can't just lift off. As we have checked, I've checked that the elements are working or that they are getting hot. So again, what we need to inform the customer is to make sure the customer realises that this left hand knob, the output, needs to be fully turned anti-clockwise and the input, the right hand knob, really only wants to be about approximately set halfway or so. And again, if the customer wants more heat in the evenings, <coughs> he can just open the open this or turn this flap clockwise, which again will open the flap inside and that will give you a boost of heat in the evening. You must remember, as mentioned earlier, before you go to bed or before you go out of the room, to turn that knob fully anti-clockwise again.